You're listening to the Digest This Podcast, and I'm your host, Bethany Cameron. Could this new pesticide be just as bad or perhaps worse than glyphosate? Today's bite of knowledge, I'm talking about chloramquat, or chloramquat as some may pronounce. Welcome back to the Digest This Podcast. I'm your host, Bethany Cameron. Today, we are talking about chloramquat, which is a new pesticide that is potentially going to be sprayed on our crops unless we act and do something about it now. I bet you didn't know that magnesium is needed to detox heavy metals. It helps the body alkalize during detoxing, which counteracts the acidity that can occur as toxins are released. Magnesium also helps activate enzymes involving detoxification, aids in bile production, and can reduce oxidative stress, which not only hinders proper detoxification, but oxidative stress has been shown to be the root cause of countless other illnesses. So if you can get that under control, then you may get to the root cause of many health issues instead of just putting a Band-Aid on them. Sadly, most magnesium supplements only contain two to three versions, but Bioptimizers contains all seven forms, conveniently all in one easy to swallow capsule. Bioptimizers Magnesium Breakthrough is soy free, gluten free, vegan, and the best part is that Bioptimizers has a 365 day money back guarantee. That's an entire year. You can try this product, and if you're not satisfied, you'll get your money back. So if you want to try this all natural, full spectrum magnesium supplement with an entire year at no risk, and experience better sleep, better bowel movements, and overall better well-being, go to bioptimizers.com slash digest for an exclusive offer and use promo code digest at checkout to save 15%. So first of all, all my listeners should be already informed about glyphosate and what it is, aka glyphosate. It's also known as Roundup, which has been shown and linked to cancer and birth defects and tons of other health issues. And it's something of concern for everyone. It should be of concern for everyone, especially in the wellness community. So If you are concerned about glyphosate, then you should be concerned about this as well. Chloramquat. So the EPA announced that it's planning to allow a dangerous pesticide for use on foods marketed towards children and, of course, adults, and it could be the next glyphosate. So first of all, what is chloramquat? It's referred to as chloramquat chloride or CCC and also called cycocell and is one of the synthetic growth retardants, which might be used for improving crop production under environmental stresses. Sounds great for producers, but what does it actually do to crops and ultimately humans? So chloramquat is a plant growth regulator or PGR, and there are several and countless on the market and being used in today. So this particular PGR, use, it's used in ornamental flowers and plants, so things that we typically don't eat, just things for beauty, right? And it's used in greenhouses and nurseries. So Remember when I talked about the plant growth regulators on my Instagram and what they spray on ginger? If you guys uh, remember that reel, it had millions of views and went viral as I explained what PGRs actually are and that growers are using them today without most of the public's knowledge. Previously, Chloramquat was only allowed for use on ornamental plants in the U.S., but it still shows up in the U.S. food supply due to chloramquat use on imported grains. So how it works is this pesticide uh, works to control plant size by blocking the hormones that stimulate growth prior to blooming. So if it blocks the growth of hormones in the plant, imagine what it can do to humans after consumption. In small grains like wheat, barley, oats, and so forth, 
lodging, which is the bending over or breakage of small stems, is a major production issue. Lodging can severely limit grain yield and harvestability and have detrimental effects on grain quality. Applying chlormaquat decreases the height of the grain plant stem, resulting in reduced lodging and potentially increased grain yield. Compared to other PGRs with similar use patterns, chlormaquat allows for more flexibility in application timing, resulting in greater ease of use for small grain producers. This is why the EPA has announced its potential use on crops, especially grains, barley, wheat, oats, etc. But have they truly looked into the health effects it could have on humans? This is a new chemical about to be sprayed on the foods we and our children eat. Just like Roundup, aka glyphosate, the effects may not be known until after years of usage and human consumption and exposure. But let's take a look at what we currently do know about chlormaquat. All right, guys, so listen to this. The New Jersey Department of Health released a hazardous fact sheet dedicated to chlormaquat. It states that, and I quote, exposure to chlormaquat chloride can cause nausea and vomiting, Higher levels can cause slow or irregular heartbeat, tremors, seizures, and coma. This may be fatal. Chlormaquat chloride may damage the liver, end quote. It also declared that this PGR can be absorbed through the skin, can cause eye redness, and when ingested, excessive salivation, sweating, diarrhea, dizziness, headache, labored breathing, nausea, and pulpillary construction may occur. Now, I'm not sure about you, but I definitely don't want that sprayed on the food that I'm putting inside my body. And in addition, the EWG senior toxicologist, Alexis Temkin, PhD, said that, and I quote, animal studies show chlormaquat can disrupt fetal growth and damage the reproductive system raising serious concern about how this chemical could harm human health, especially children, end quote. And in January of this year, 2023, the EWG published the results of an investigation that found, for the very first time, troubling concentrations of chlormaquat in oat-based products sold in the U.S., including everyday brands marketed to adults and children. Quaker old-fashioned oats did have the highest levels of chlormaquat, but I'm going to list a few other brands that they found pretty high in this PGR as well. So the Walmart great value brand oats and honey granola was pretty high. Quaker simply granola oats, honey, and almonds. The Quaker oatmeal squares honey nut Quaker instant oatmeal, maple, and brown sugar. A lot of Quaker here, here, guys. Also special K fruit and yogurt cereal. The Good and Gather French vanilla almond granola. General Mills honey nut Cheerios, no surprise. General Mills regular Cheerios. General Mills Cheerios oat crunch and honey. And General Mills frosted Cheerios. Vitamin C is well known for its immune boosting benefits, but did you know it's also a crucial nutrient with numerous benefits for the body? It acts as a potent antioxidant, aids in collagen production, and enhances iron absorption. Vitamin C contributes to healthy skin, blood vessels, and bones, and plays a role in wound healing. So yes, if you're low in iron, and I think many are, maybe you're doing all the right things, but lacking vitamin C, that may just be the missing link you need. But you want to make sure the vitamin C you're taking is also being absorbed properly. I've noticed that when I take a liquid liposomal vitamin C versus a pill, the liquid is absorbed so much better and faster. 
I love Peak Tea's liposomal vitamin C that you can just suck straight from the package. It actually tastes delicious and is also packed with elderberry for optimal synergy because studies even show that when elderberry and vitamin C are taken together, the benefits are much greater than just taking alone. So if you want 20% off Peak Tea's liposomal vitamin C or any of their amazing organic toxin-free teas, just go to peaklife.com slash digest and you'll get 20% off automatically. That's peaklife.com slash digest. peaklife.com slash digest. Now note, these are just a few products and brands that were tested and showed up positive for Chlormaquat. And there are countless other products and brands on the market that I'm sure not aren't even yet being tested, but these are the ones that were definitely flagged. And it seems like the EPA is focusing on profit-fueled interests of the pesticide industry and big agribusiness instead of the health and well-being of the public. But interestingly enough, the EPA assessed whether exposures to this product would cause unreasonable adverse effects to human health and the environment as required by the FIFRA And based on their assessment, they state there are no risks of concern. Are they for real? Like, okay, the okay, I'm I'm literally I'm lost for words here. They they determine there's no risk for concern. But let's just take a pause here. Okay, just like they determined Roundup was safe to use and is still being sprayed all over our crops. Despite all the lawsuits, health issues, cancers, and lives lost. I mean, they're still allowing that. So I just, I literally am lost for words here. The EPA proposal to allow chlormaquat to be potentially sprayed on crops that ultimately become the main ingredient in foods we eat like cereals is a serious mistake that puts the health and safety of the American public, especially children, at risk, per EWG vice president. And I have to strongly agree. I mean, they said it, not me. And guys, if finalized, the decision would mark the first ever approval for using the dangerous pesticide chlormaquat chloride on U.S. food. Thank you to everyone listening to this week's Bite of Knowledge, and I hope it was helpful and insightful and made you a little bit more smarter than your friends as we together learn and grow. See you guys on Wednesday. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digest This. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review in your podcast app to let us know. If you're ever wondering how you can support me and this podcast, sharing it with your friends and family is the best way. This is a Wellness Loud production produced by Drake Peterson and edited by Mike Fry. To check out more shows by my team, go to wellnessloud.com and to email the show, message us at digestthispod at gmail.com. See you next time. The content of this show is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not a substitute for individual medical and mental health advice and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. As always, talk to your doctor or health team first. Are you ready to rock middle age? I'm Dr. Tina Moore, Gen X truth teller and holistic physician. On the Dr. Tina Show, one of Apple Podcast's top alternative health shows, I share what actually works for metabolic health, hormones, and strength backed by decades of clinical results, not trends. From loving the gym and hitting your protein goals to peptides and microdosing GLP-1s, it's all done the right way, not the hype way. Because menopause doesn't have to suck if you're fit. New episodes every Thursday, produced by Drake Peterson and Wellness Loud.